Hi, I'm Dr. Wyatt again, and uh, I'm a general dentist that's done nothing but orthodontics for the last 45 years, and I've had a lot of experience that I'm trying to pass some of it on to other people. Uh, I'm a member of the American Orthodox Society, and this is a society of general and pediatric dentists that are sole purpose is teaching orthodontics to general pediatric dentists and any other dentists that really want to get in there and learn orthodontics. So this morning I'm going to talk to you something about cysts and understanding them. I, I don't think that uh, everybody really understands uh, what cysts can do and how you might be able to treat them with as little damage as uh, possible. Uh, I've seen all kinds of things like this. My wife and I were in, worked in Africa when we were a lot younger. Uh, it was in the early 60s. And I saw and treated some cysts as big as a hen egg in a policeman's jaw there in Enugu, Nigeria. I had a hospital send me, one of our mission hospitals sent me a case in one time, and uh, this guy had a jaw that well, looked like as big as my wrist all the way around. Looked like a monstrous jaw, and it had a little hole in the front, you know, pretty good size opening. It had uh, older form gall stuck in it, and I uh, had a little tiny flashlight I could stick in the end of that, and I uh, pull that out and looked up inside and his whole jaw was a cyst and the teeth roots were hanging down in there like in a cave you know the stalactites or stalagmites whatever it is and uh, it was really odd and I wanted to get to treat this guy I was just going to keep it open and uh, take the pressure off the cyst and it shrinks down over a period of time but he didn't speak any English at all and the, nor none of the young men in the office could uh, speak to him and he was scared to death and so he never came back in the office I really wish he had we would have just continued to keep that open and I'm sure that the whole thing would shrink down. So anyway I'm going to try to show you what actually happens to the teeth as they as the cyst shrinks. I'm going to sh show you this case right here is an ideal case. It was done here in the in the States of course and the cyst is not in the upper right it's in the upper left uh, the cuspid area, I'm sorry I didn't get that written down right, uh, and a nice little girl, and I'm going to go through and just show you some of the things uh, happened about it, and it was brought about by a, a defective deciduous molar that somebody had put a stainless steel crown on, they thought they had gotten rid of the infection in the molar and had it look like packed with some uh, zinc oxide using all or something anyway had a stainless steel crown and the pressure couldn't get out out of it so it went up and I've had this happen in several other cases I'll try to uh, remember some of them and get them up and show you some of those but the cysts push these teeth all out of position I'll show you that in a minute let me kind of run over the facial structure of the little girl and uh, you don't really see much on the outside looking at this you wouldn't suspect that there's a cyst developing right up in in this part of the facial structure right here uh, but it's pushed the face very little and when she smiles she's got a terrible gummy smile and uh uh, this is when I first saw her, so I don't know how this came about, but she does have a, a 
she may have some kind of breathing problem. She's got a very short upper lip, and when she smiles, it just completely opens up. Then you see the gum tissue up there, and that's not very good. So if you have a gummy smile, don't smile like that. Just smile like Cary Grant, or whether he just kind of parts his lips and smiles. It worked for him. So uh, anyway, we'll look at the teeth and what's going on here. Now, you can see this little, the crown is off now, and the space is kind of close together, but the defective molar, you never want to put a crown on them uh, uh, you, unless you could really do a root canal and get it completely cleaned out because the pressure can't get out of it and so it pushes up from that tooth and you have to amaze at what this little old sis did right here to this young lady's teeth. I'm going to show you that in a minute. Uh, the other side of the mouth pretty normal except there's a second black cuspid trying to come in back here and it gets kind of crossways and she's very very crowded so we're going to take some teeth out on her too we'll take out her first black cuspid it may have had some uh, effect on the cyst but not too much now this is an eight uh, 30 of 93 when we started this and we'll see what this does now uh, here the deciduous tooth the deciduous first molars where they crowned it and it's got something still in there and these, these teeth are coming in behind the laterals are behind and it's a real crowded case and she was pretty full of face so I decided we would eliminate the, the first bicuspids on the case and it worked out real good. So we go in there and uh, on the lower arch you can see the cuspids sticking way, uh, way out here and uh, we take out the first bias and get the cuspids into place there. The rest of it's just regular orthodontics, nothing particular but there is the deciduous tooth that was crowned and that caused the this cyst to get, grow out of proportion just tremendously uh, we'll get around there in a minute in fact it pushed the cuspid tooth I think was way up here the bicuspid didn't move too far I'll show you on the x-rays I've got a lot of x-rays on it now we lined stuff up and went through this and actually I'm going to get ahead of the x-rays here with the treatment uh, just showing you the bands and everything other brackets we've got on here this is in 95 say so 93 this is after the cyst was taken care of and we got the cuspid down in place let me run on until I get onto these x-rays and there we did a kind of a first phase treatment and uh, we'll take several years in treating these. He was started in 93 and it's 95 now and we've still got a year or so to do in the treatment. Uh, here we've got everything lined up now and looks real good uh, without the first bias. These are, these are still deciduous molars coming in and one of them, the one on the right, the bicuspid gets hung up a little bit coming through there also. So uh, just lining that up with the uh, finish out the first phase. Okay, the lower anterior is lined up pretty good now. Uh, so we got the cuspids and laterals and things lined up good. Uh, just the second decision molar left in here. We extracted that. So we've gone through with the uh, treatment so you can see, but then we're going to pick up all this on the x-rays now. <clears throat> uh, if you will observe now on the 
left side of the mouth, we've got a deciduous crown right here. You see this crown? And that tooth, you can see they did a pulvotomy or something and put that crown on. But the, the infection was in there. And this was in 91. I hadn't seen this young lady then up to this time. Now, I don't get another picture here until 93 when she came in and we had this other material there. And let's just rock back and forth here for a minute. See where the lateral teeth are coming in right here. They're lingual. And then the cuspid is up here and the first bow over there. And we're trying to get all that between this space right here. You, well, the lateral would have taken up something like this. And you get these other three in here. It was going to be extremely crowded. So prior to waiting, we went ahead and took out the first bicuspids in the case later later on now I'll, sh I'll show you when we get to that now watch in from 91 January of 91 this is 93 I believe just uh, we went to that that's 8 of 93 so 91 92 and 8 months into 93 I had never seen the case. I, she brought that other x-ray with her. Now that crown right here had caused the cyst to form and that epithelial tissue can take stuff in but it can't, can't expel it. And so it develops a tremendous pressure. And you see I even made the root of the lateral crooked right in here. I don't know this one was crooked also, but probably the cuspid coming down hitting it. Now it took that cuspid and shoved it way up here in the mouth. The bicuspid is, is sticking in here. It went around it or it was sticking out in the cyst, I guess. I don't know exactly how it was there. But anyway, that's the way it was. Now let's look back at the way it it, and then looked like over two years before anybody saw it again and uh, it looked like this that's the same thing and uh, I learned a lot doing this case that, uh, which I knew much of it that the, the cyst would shrink you know so we came in and now we take out the deciduous teeth in this area plus this tooth right here. So we did the same thing over here, did the same thing here, and in this area right there. So uh, now that's 90, it was 8 of 93, I believe, and now this is 94, and you see what's happened here. We hold this space, or there's plenty of space. This cuspid comes on over and heads down. This cuspid has changed quite a bit, and it's coming in pretty good. And it will come right on down into the mouth with actually nothing. Now here, we had planned to come in with our first phase of treatment other than surgery. So this is what we were planning to do on the upper arch. I drew it on there so you'd know what we were planning to do. Now let's look at it a little later down the line. And those cuspids are in line and what you saw a while ago outside 95 that was in pretty good. Now this bicuspid here is going to have a little trouble. It's hung up, it's not it's resorbed the dent but the shell is enamel and it doesn't resorb it. It runs into it and the tooth is held on pretty good. And so this bicuspid is not making it here. So you gotta take that out. Of course we took both of them out and brought all this down in here. Let me take the next picture. All right, now here I blew, or just 
shot a picture of just this part what had actually happened here so you can see this thing arose from this deciduous tooth it was not it was infected and they didn't get rid of the infection they crowned it and I've had this happen on several other cases where they say they still crown over a tooth that wasn't uh, treated properly and the pressure from this caused this thing to go and it got in the cystic uh, category and it pushed the teeth all out of place. Now I think I go to the treated side and there it is after that was January of 94 and uh, this was 8 of 93 so just a few months after we took this out and got all this cleared up and kept it open and this tooth starts down in the, into place and we eliminate this this tooth comes in fills that space and the space is just going to be just about what the cuspid will need to get in now the child's full face to start with with that crowding she'll be better off without the teeth and that is a fact so uh, people who think you should never take out a tooth is wrong but to, to take out some teeth now this is the next let's see here we go this is where it was in 94 and we brought that lateral back in place as soon as we got the cuspid down in here see that lateral though developed that crook in the root from that uh, cyst actually caused that to happen now that's in place and then my cuspid is coming in real good here and we'll have a little space left over but not much now that little space may help the child get her wisdom teeth in later down the line I've extracted bias on uh, you know, there's a very few that we do but when we do we try to save the wisdom teeth and we'd be surprised how many wisdom teeth we save where we take out the bicuspid in front and bring the teeth from the back to the forward uh, position now this tooth was a little problem here so we uh, got that out and got that in place and the other deciduous teeth were coming in so we more or less finished that case up from that point so instead of two phases instead of the two phases this was the end of the first phase was back there ways and now we'll come in and do the uh, second part of the case now sometimes these parts run together and you'll have the first phase just go into the second phase so you've got to think about if you're charging for one phase and it just continues on you want to realize that when you start and just do it in a long term uh, operation now let's see and here's the after we got that cleared up this is 96 and we started out in 93 but this crown was put on that tooth in 91 so these cases go for a long stretch and it's hard for students in orthodontic school to ever see a case like this uh, they come in and the case will be still going full blast when they graduate and it'll go for another several years sometimes so they pick up one case and see it and then pick up another case so it's hard to to show somebody this or do something like this a case from start to finish so some of them go six or eight years before you get through with them and uh, that's a fact I've had a few that lasted eight years and it wasn't because it was bad orthodontics uh, they just teeth didn't get there in time now these will come out of course and we'll finish the case up and I think that's all uh, we'll show you the models when we started here and uh, the 
class one, class two situation a little bit. But as we open this up, the jaw come forward some. And here we are lining them up. Now the next is this is looking from the anterior, the closed bite. And here we are, it's still closed, but we haven't done anything on the lower arch yet. And from the side over here in 93, so when we started here, it was in 95. Uh, there's the teeth like that. Here they are now. We've got the cuspids in. And uh, this, this cuspid on the left side of the mouth has really been on a trip getting down into the mouth. But it got there. And here we were crowded out. We took the first vines. And we've got the cuspids coming in down here with plenty of room and everything. So this is kind of the end of the first phase. Now that's the... That's the only, that's as far as I go with this particular case. But I'm going to go back a little bit and uh, get to this part where the teeth were coming in. And it is amazing what a cyst will do. Now it took this cuspid and shoved it up like that. And I had a, I'm going to show another case. I think I'll just do a separate video on it where uh, the old surgeon really didn't know the best thing to do. We had a cyst back on the right posterior part of the lady's, uh, young lady's mouth and it had pushed a molar down real bad and so when the the old surgeon there just used to go in there and doing it all at once and he peeled the cyst out of there which uh, isn't necessary if you keep this hole open for uh, months, sometimes a couple of months, putting the autoform gauze in there. Then it shrinks up and the tooth is pushed out of place, pulls back into place like this tooth did here. We, we didn't go up in there and peel the cyst out. We just kept this thing open down here. The pressure was off and the tooth came on back on its own. And that's something the old surgeons aren't taught, but they're taught to get in there and do it and get through with it. So he peeled the whole cyst out, and I've got a picture of the cyst, and then he took the molar out. And if he'd have just, if I had known, maybe I, I didn't realize myself, if I had just opened the hole in there big enough and kept it open for a period of several months, it would have probably, the molar would have come out of the place. I'll have to show that uh, later. But anyway, that tooth goes from this position back to its correct position. And we got this out of the way. They were crowded. And if they hadn't been crowded, we could have opened up and got this tooth in here and brought this tooth down too. So uh, you can handle it either way. But I felt like the face would be too full if we went that direction. So now it's headed back, and you saw the other deals. It's down in there now, uh, perfectly fine, and you never suspect that that had happened. So I'm going to finish out this video and hope you'll learn a lot from that. That will happen, and sis, if you open them up, and keep them open they shrink and this is what that I was going to try to do on that guy that came in with the whole lower jaw was a cyst I've never seen anything close to that and you would never see that here in the states or, or any of the developed countries and this was early 60s when the hospital sent this guy over to me and uh, if I had kept his this hole open it's probably taken several months I mean to keep our form gauze in there and keep it open and uh, let the pressure off I believe that whole jaw would have shrunk down to nearly normal and uh, anyway I didn't get to do it but I did treat some with as big as a hen egg in their jaw and, and that worked I had to get rid of the cause of the cyst uh, and do it and then keep it open and the 
area just shrunk back up again over a period of time. So that's where the old surgeons don't have the period of time. They go in there and do it and get rid of everything and get out of there. Uh, but that's not the best way to treat them. The best way is to take some time and treat these cases. So I'll try to bring this next one up on a separate video and show it to you. Well, hope you learned something from this. And I'm going to say goodbye here and stop this video.